the other hand, a relation of being, so something of ontological nature, a relation to being, that cannot be known. <coughs> Or something what cannot be demonstrated. We must say that there is a great difficulty, a sort of tension and maybe a sort of contradiction. One can one obtain a knowledge of the truth, which is the goal of psychoanalysis, if the content of that truth is precisely what cannot be known. <laughs> Or, you know, it's in fact the situation, the concrete situation of psychoanalysis. The truth of the subject is precisely what the subject cannot be <coughs> known. It is why it's unconscious. But in another sense, the goal of psychoanalysis is to constitute a knowledge of the truth. But where is the knowledge of the truth? if the truth is precisely the truth of something which cannot be known. I don't see that it is a formal contradiction. It's not interesting. Uh, but it's precisely the, the note of the question, the core of the question. How can there exist a knowledge of the truth of the unknown? In psychoanalysis, and it is probably uh, the point of difficulty with philosophy, in psychoanalysis, what cannot be known ends up being the knowledge of the truth. That is the process of the pure, as such, to go at the point where something cannot be known to the truth. But not only to the truth, but to the knowledge of the truth, says Lacan. I think that the only possibility to clarify this contradiction is certainly that the unconscious thinks, <coughs> which is a classical thesis of Freud, Lacan, the unconscious things. But in all this process, the unconscious is in the position of being in the field of psychoanalysis. So in my opinion, Lacan himself says that in one sense, being thinks. <laughs> Because the proper being of psychoanalysis, the name of being of being of the subject. The name of being of the subject in psychoanalysis is precisely the unconscious. Or if the unconscious thinks, which explain that we can go from something which is unknown to something which is a knowledge of the truth, that is the unconscious knowledge, the appearing of the unconscious knowledge, If we have all that, certainly we can finally localize the void in the subject, but at the price that the being of the subject thinks. Mm -hmm. And we return to the uh, same space for philosophy and for psychoanalysis. The unconscious things, or if you like, much more in the words of Lacan, it sings, <coughs> it sings. And that it sings is not really different from the philosophical idea according to which being sings. 
eight things. For example, the field of the can say, okay, I take as an axiom eight things. <laughs> After that, the question of the localization will be different. The philosopher stop to eight things. So being things, if you want, but some being things. And for psychoanalysis, naturally, is more specifically being of the subject, the name of which is unconscious. unconscious. Alors, maybe we can say, as a, as a peace treaty with psychoanalysis, or with Lacan, Okay, we say that the part of being, the part of being uh, which thinks, uh, the part of being which permits that we say it thinks, is the subject. So there is a relationship between subject and thinking, certainly. But It thinks because something in the subject is in the form of unconscious knowledge. And so the part of being it thinks is the unconscious knowledge of the subject. But there is no fatal difference between the two. And finally, To localize the void and truth, both philosophy and psychoanalysis have need of an axiom concerning thought. That is the point. The philosophical axiom is thought must be able to be understood on the basis of being. There is an ontological understanding of what is thought. And the psychoanalysis axiom There is unconscious thought. Okay, we can. Uh, there is unconscious thought, but there is no absolute difference between these two principles. What is common this time is the tearing away of truth from consciousness. But we agree with that. We agree with the possibility of tearing out truth from consciousness. We are not in the phenomenological conception where truth cannot be subtracted to consciousness in contemporary philosophy. The thinking of the effect of truth outside conscious and reflexive production. That is what is in common, finally, between contemporary philosophy and psychoanalysis. This also means say, that the void is not the void of consciousness. That is, is not Sartre's nothingness. And it is why we are also, uh, there is also like an alliance between psychoanalysis and contemporary philosophy against the phenomenological conception of the effect of truth as a conscious effect. One very important consequence of this localization of the void outside consciousness, which is finally the common point, is I think the importance of mathematics for Lacan as for a big part, an essential part of contemporary philosophy. And why? Because mathematics is precisely the thinking which has nothing to do with the experiences of consciousness thinking which has no relation to reality, but which is the knot of letters and the real. Letters and the real. That is the point where mathematics is a thinking. 
mathematics is the more the purest example of thinking faced by the void because it obeys the ideal of formalization and in fact I think we can agree with Lacan on this point. Mathematics is the veritable apparatus of localization of the void. For it is what in transmission entirely unties out what separates us from the real. If you want between the real and the mathematical form, there is precisely nothing. <coughs> and naturally, this is why Lacan writes, I quote him, mathematical formalization is our goal, our ideal. Why? Because it alone is matim that is capable of being entirely transmitted. Mathematical formalization is our goal, our ideal. And why? Because it alone is matim that is capable of being entirely transmitted. In the same manner, I pose that mathematics is the science of being qua being. And I will therefore say, like Lacan, that mathematization is compatible with our discourse, the philosophical discourse. My proposition will be the following. Psychoanalysis and philosophy have a common border, which is the ideal of the matin. probably in the two cases without any real matim, the ideal of the matim. Mm. That is something like an orientation, an experimentation of some possible matims, approximation of a matim, not disparition of the thinking in the pure form, of the matim, <coughs> but the matim has an ideal. And because the matim is the pure instance of the localization of the void in the form of letters, pure letters, without any signification. And so the true, the true possibility of examination of uh, this relation between psychoanalysis and philosophy passes first of all via mathematics. Probably one must not, it is the ambiguity. It is impossible, I think, to create direct confrontation between the great categories we share, like being, the real, the subject, truth, and so on and so on, conscious and conscious. All that we have in common, but direct confrontation are without any future. We say, what is the subject for Lacan? What is the subject in philosophy? What is the real for Lacan or for Freud? What is the real in philosophy? All that is a pure exercise without uh, any uh, real interest. But 